Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This is just the Moving Iron Podcast. This is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. Um, it's cool to have Jason and I back on here again. Um, Jason was on here last month and, and uh, right before the Moving Iron Summit happened. And he and his team were down at the Moving Iron Summit. And uh, it's good to have those guys there. It's the first time they'd been there. And uh felt like you guys had a pretty busy booth the whole time. Every time I had a chance to walk by there. It was good. Uh, the show was really good. I mean, great attendees. The folks that were there, we learned a lot from. And honestly, that's the biggest thing. You bring such great people there that they learn as much from each other. Not that right. the sessions weren't great because they were and they were timely and good discussions. But all all during the show, we saw people talking to each other across dealerships, digging into stuff, stopping with us, talking to Tractors Room, all the other folks. Um, but just a lot of peer-to-peer -peer conversations and learning on top of all the great stuff you brought to the show as well. So it was really good uh, all the way around, both as an attendee and a sponsor and a, and a, and a booth there. Yeah, no, I, pretty, no, I think you guys did a great job, and I really appreciate you guys being there. So, well, well Jason, let's tell you the one thing that, that your, your, your product brings to the table is um, the CRM solution. But it's not like the whole, you know, typical yeah. CRM cookie cutter, you know, give me a bunch of data and let me – type my you know every night after work spend two and a half hours typing data into, into a database right so it's you, you get a lot of great information uh that you guys can put in there so talk about that a little bit what you have going on there absolutely you know crm is a four-letter word to a lot of a lot of sales people yeah. and such and rightly so um yeah. you know for probably the last 20 years it's been a digital rolodex or just where stuff went in and wasn't used for anything and it was just a way for sales managers to track their salespeople, but you know, being built on the Salesforce platform, we've been able to leverage really best in class, um, you know, transformation of that whole thing. And it really comes down to, if you look at the name CRM, it is customer relationship management. It is the center of everything. And that's why we call it the customer 360. Um, every time you talk to a customer, every time customer comes into the business, uh, parts counter, et cetera, buys, buys parts, buys service, buys a piece of equipment, it creates that relationship. And that's what we try to bring together into that. So instead of sticky notes, notebooks, spreadsheets, all that stuff that you know we've traditionally used for years to keep track of our customers, that's what a great CRM allows you to do is you go there and you get a complete view of that customer. It is not just call logs. Yes, we do that. But it is all about sharing information and, and presenting to the user, the salesperson or whoever, that relationship that the dealership has with that uh, with that salesperson. So when they call in, when they have an issue, uh, they feel like you know them, you mm -hmm. know, and that's that's uh, expected, but yeah. also getting harder and harder to do. So that's where that customer 360 comes into play is, you know, what do they own? Serial numbers. You know, I remember calling in and like asking for serial numbers and such. And like, you should know that you sold it to me. Well, yeah. yes, but it's over here in this other system. Now it's right in your face. And adding those calls, but even just scheduling, uh, follow-ups, getting back to people, you know how much more we could sell with just better follow-up, better better understanding of the customers. And that's what a great CRM gives you. Yeah. So when you're looking at that, that customer information, it's like you're talking about diving into that serial number base and those kind of things and looking at, you know, all the nuances that come into what they have. I mean, the biggest thing that we have right now is, if you're looking at some of these customers that have um, multiple machines on the farm and they come in and how many times they've come in and there's a serial number break or something like that in that mix. How, how do you guys, how, how does your CRM work to where, you know, if I need to make sure that I I can, you know, physically see what my customers have and don't have on their phone, how, how is that popping up if they, if they go up to yeah. say the, the parts can or something like that? Absolutely. Well, it's because the integration is, again, it's built on Salesforce, which is one of the strongest attributes of that platform is just its integration strength. So because it's real time into the business system. So like on the deer side, if you're in Equip or CDK or Aspen, mm -hmm. knowing what's been put into there, what's been on the work order, what they've purchased, um, we take that information and present it up to you all sorted and filtered and down to that customer. Pull up, you know, Casey Farms. And right there, it makes a real-time call out and says, here's the equipment this person needs. You click on the equipment tab and it shows you right there what they had, which is really the key there is how do we use this stuff? It's one thing to just dump data into there, but that's how you use it. It's like uh, 
you know, it, the classic example I remember is winter inspections. About every September, every dealership's scrambling through who has the spreadsheet of who signed up last year for inspections so that we can go send them postcards or who has the spreadsheet of who signed up for service agreements this year for technology, who's got planner startups. And it's a spreadsheet here. It's a spreadsheet there. It's on somebody's computer. How do you do that? It doesn't add any value. You start looking at shared wallet and demographics and what you can use it for. Probably the most rewarding thing that we've had is when marketing is able to actually use this information and, and add value, add leads, do marketing based upon what salespeople have put in, what customer histories have been into there, who owns this, what technology are they a part of, just that whole demographic piece and knowing your customer and asking the right questions just goes a long way in, in building that relationship. They want to know that you know about them and building that share wallet where uh, you know who's in bulk oil, who's got parts on site cabinets, who's, uh, um, who's taking part in your winter inspections. And that's where the customization comes in is, yeah, we have a lot of that out of the box, but you have your own program. Great. We can track that on the account record just the same as any of the generic ones. And that makes it to where this information is useful. So things like, you know, John Deere Operations Center ID, how many farms do they have? What's their agronomist? Those things, if you're really trying to build that cohesive understanding, you need to be have a place to track it and use it in a way that I can get it out. Because now it's on your phone, it's on your tablet, it's where you are, not locked up in some database or a spreadsheet or a notebook someplace else. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, so much of that stuff gets just lost in the, in the various tunnels of endless nothingness that, that exists out there. Especially when you look at like, you know, we've got various places where they're like shared folders and you don't know when it was last updated and what information's in there. And if that information is correct, where this is, this is live, right? So you're, you put it in there, yeah. it's there and it, it's there and it timestamps it and all that stuff. And it's like what the customer wants to know what, you know, where's the, where's it at in the shop? Right. When am I going to get this piece of equipment? I got this tractor on order. When am I going to get it? You don't have to pull out the laptop. You don't have to open up the order system and go see where it is. We've pulled that information out of there and consolidated it in, in one place. History, service history, um, what have they owned? What have they traded? Just stuff that you want to know, but it's been really hard in the past to get it. So you weren't using it. That's what people have with, with Anvil and Dealer Connect is the ability to go in there and actually get that complete picture. Two minutes before you pull in the driveway, you can have a complete picture of what's going on for any customer that you've got. Right. Okay. So when you're looking at how you bring all this data together, right? So you, you've got all this customer data, you got all this information coming in, you're collecting this data. How, how am I using it? How, what am I doing yeah. with it? You know, what's, how, how am I... <clears throat> How are you bringing all these systems together, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a great question. And it's really when you look at, you know, people are paying billions of dollars now for customer data, right? Yes. You look at Facebook and Apple and advertising sure. information. That's the outcome that they're going for is serving you up ads. Mm -hmm. Information on our side in our business is important for us understanding share wallet. What, do they take part in our inspections? Are they part of our service program? How can we serve them? How can we, which people are just buying equipment and which ones are going into service? So what we do is we talk to the ERP system. So the business system, we talk to the quoting systems, we talk to the advertising systems, and that's where things actually start getting used. And that's, that's the, the key. So whether it's a, uh, uh, you know, better list for spring planner clinics, who's bought that, whether it's parts campaigns and it's now time for bail, you know, net wrap. And you're able to pull out a, a very simple list of here's everybody who bought a Baylor with net wrap, op, net wrap option for us last year. Let's go do a follow-up campaign and see who's interested and who needs some net wrap for the year. Those are our actionable steps because we talk, we know inventory, we know the customer, we know the sales history, and we know the quoting side of it as well, all on the same platform. And that's what it's for. It's about how do we use it and how do we make it uh, really effective into that. So sending out emails, sending out texts, automated uh, service reminders, texts for planner clinics, you know, sprayer clinics, et cetera, sending those nice emails uh, yeah. right to the customer about pieces of equipment. It's, it just makes life easy. Yeah. 
and, and pulls it all together there. And then the other side of it is now we start seeing trends. You know, we, uh, we start looking at uh, technology adoption rates. We start looking at acres across the farm and you want to be proactive with the customer. That's where a system like this helps you to identify those issues. Uh, where are farmers using less technology? Where are they growing into there? Who's doing less business? Who's doing more business with you? So instead of just a, a classic example, right? In the EOP timeframe, combine EOP opened up. Well, who did we quote to last year? Who's got combines now? Who's got two-year-old combines? Those are great questions, but now we can create those lists, feed them to the salespeople to where they have really a campaign of, these are our targeted customers. These are who we need to do it with, faster follow-ups, better service, better relationships all the way come from and across that. Because no matter what process in the dealership, what thing goes on in the dealership, it comes from the customer. So if you talk about a texting service, it starts with a customer database. You talk sure. about quoting, you talk about marketing, you talk about email campaigns. It all starts with a customer database, which is a CRM. So the ERP system, the accounts is the basis for that and integration. And then just how much stuff can we stick to it? We can stick uh, equipment history, call history. Uh, my best example, we had a, uh, we had a dealership utilizing a call center. And you think call center, how does that help relationships? Well, this call center, the customer called and had a problem with his hydraulics on the tractor. And they provided great service. They gave him some technical help. They sent him a parts list, had a great transaction and closed it. But they put that on the customer record. The CSR for that area got in his inbox automatically that morning. Here's all of my customers that have contacted the call center yesterday. In there, he saw that they had hydraulic issues with a machine, put that on his call list, followed up with them, was able to make a really good service sale, as well as a part sale out of that, just from the standpoint that he was notified and aware of that the customer had called the call center and had a conversation. The call center didn't do anything but just do their job, mm -hmm. provided great service, but the CRM is what allowed that, that CSR, that, that service rep, to reach out proactively say, I saw you're having a problem, build that connection. We, we know what's going on with you and then turn that into a great service part sale and a great relationship going forward. And that's where automation tools, bringing this into a CRM that would have never happened with pen and paper or post-it notes in a spreadsheet. Yep. That's all about building that deeper relationship with your customer. You know what I mean? That's it is. And that's, that's what you got going on here. So Right on. The other side of it is how do we take this into, uh, you know, proactiveness and, and exactly yeah. customers are, are really demanding a lot more out of us as we, uh, you know, they're, they're cruising machinery peat at night. They're, they're sure. looking at tractor zoom at night and they're finding something that they really like and they want to, they want to connect. They want to have a digital connection with you. Those systems are, are really good, but a lot of dealerships are still handling that just in their inbox. Right. You know, email comes in, somebody on the marketing side, somebody on the sales side gets it, emails it off to somebody and hopes like heck mm -hmm. that that customer got contacted. We really took that challenge on with the CRM and uh, we built out an application. We call it our marketing requests. Yeah. And, and what that really allows us to do is take all of those emails from all of those sources you know, whether it's from your finance group, whether it's from your advertising team, your own website, ton of leads come in from your website via email. <laughs> we consolidate all those together and they come in and they, they, they parse themselves out, but we use those automation and the AI tools to figure out, hey, we already know who this person is. They've con we've contacted them three times in the last two months about tractors. Yeah. They found another one. So the salesperson is coming in engaged Ernie prepared, they're notified that the customer came in there, that they can then go work that deal with a lot more knowledge, a lot more understanding, uh, and make a better quote off of that. But at a dealership level, we've all learned faster follow-up, more follow-up. These customers expect follow-up quickly when they send those emails in. Yep. So we built in escalation timers and tools to just you know, prod you along and say, hey, you know, this has been sitting here for a little bit. Maybe you should bring somebody else in on it. Maybe you should get back to this customer. So we've got a escalation process built in. 
we've got this tied right into the quoting tool. So Dealer Connect's got its built-in quoting tool and Anvil has its integration to the John Deere system. So it's tied right into that. So that we can start doing things like, you know, web, web leads that come in from your website where they've inquired about a specific piece of equipment, those have a close rate of 24%, right? Or this month we've closed X amount of dollars from this site. So you start having those conversations with your marketing team and you start having the conversations with your suppliers about your website is actually providing us valuable leads or the opposite. It's not right. helping you tune in and do that. And then having those management conversations as well as we're getting leads in, we're paying for these leads. We've assigned them to you for follow-up and you're only following up on half of them or all of them or a quarter of them or something. But you can tell where the team is is uh, providing that great service. Right. You could argue that's a little bit of a watchdog, but the idea of it there is customers have contacted you, said, hey, I want some interest. I'm interested in this machine. And we have delivered that platform that allows you to move from your inbox, trying to keep this on a shared inbox and hoping to a dedicated system where it's a real app. I get notification. It's tied to my quoting system. I have real analytics on it. And I have automation that says, you already know who this person is. Here's the last three contacts, for example. And that has just changed the game. But that's enabled by that CRM. You know, if we didn't have that connection to the business system or we didn't have that customer list, then we don't, we'd have, all we'd have would be that inbox to manage those in. So right. it's, uh, it's that key. It's, it's the CRM unlocks all sorts of functionality, all sorts of modern technology. Um, for data mining, better marketing, better follow-ups, and at the end of the day, just happier customers and a better relationship. Absolutely. Yep. So now you've got all this information, you're working these things together, you built that relationship, and all those things come together. You got these inbound leads that come in uh, from all their opportunities that you see happen out there. Um, just how, how does this help organize that lead generation part of it? You know what I mean? That's, that's the hard part. You get all this stuff coming in, you're trying to sort out which one's the first one I need to call on who, who, how am I handling this? Yeah. That seems Absolutely. like the hardest part of all that. It is. And you know, when we were interviewing salespeople and, and putting things together here, that was probably the most common feedback was I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do when I call this person, right? I got a call. I know I'm supposed to, um, but everything is so disjointed and disconnected that I just forget stuff. And one of our more popular features is those follow-ups, the six month follow-up, a 30 day follow-up, et cetera. We usually start looking at some of our customers and you know, they may have just emailed in about a tractor that they saw on an advertising site or visited your website. They may have a 30 day follow-up you have to do on a, on a UTV that you sold them or a tractor yeah. deal that you've sold them. You may end up having six, seven, eight different reasons for follow-up and connection and to bring up when you're a part of it with Anvil and Dealer Connect, you just pull up that customer and one of the tabs is all of the different requests, whether it's uh, uh, marketing generated, whether it is automated internal, whether it's an EOP follow-up or whatever you need to do, it is right there on that, on that uh, screen. What are, what are my requests for this customer? And I can close them. I can go through there and say, I talked about this, 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 and this. Here's my feedback. Hit close. And it's very straightforward for a salesperson to keep up on it and see what it is. Now, as far as picking the right customers, we do things a, a little different. Um, we keep track of, of the last time it was contacted and the last time somebody at the dealership contacted them as well. So not just the owner, not just the salesperson. We keep track of over you know the last thing a purchase order a work order a contact whatever it is for that customer so when you're looking at people that need to be followed up on who you should contact next you know that not my top 10 customers but number 12 you know the, the one that you always seem to bypass you have a work list it comes to you and says this month these people need to be contacted because it's been x days since they've been out there and then when you pull up and create that list and then we've also made it super easy. I remember back in the day, you know, we'd, 
we have said we we had people who would drive to this big customer and then cross over another 20 customers to go to this big customer and not right. do anything in between there we have an app we just launched it right on the account you look at that customer and it immediately shows you the, the closest 15 customers to that customer so that you can identify and it's got that indicator are they do are there things open for that customer so that you can route that Google Maps integration makes it easy right on your to send that for directions and give you directions to that next customer over there as well. Or we've all had that customer uh, back out of a meeting or you know something happened and the appointment gets skipped and you're out two hours from the store. What do you do now? Well, these three customers are on your way home. Uh, stop by and call them because this is an open issue with this one. This is an open issue with that one. I'd like to say it makes it, it does some thinking for you. But what I really like is it, it helps you just know what you already know. Right. Somebody in the dealership knows this, that they have an, a, a big work order in the shop or that they're due for a follow-up. What that What is turned that from, you just have to know it to where your phone, you open up that customer and it pushes it and it tells you all the things you already know about that customer as a dealership. You know, technology is great. It's really made a, oh, big impact. You know, you call Domino's. <laughs> Right. The teenager on the on the other end of the phone, he doesn't know who you are, but he or she doesn't know who you are. But what they do know is, hello, Mr. Seymour, would you like that pepperoni pizza and buffalo wings that you that you have ordered last time? Would you like to order that again? Yeah, that's the type of experience you're coming to expect. Right. Because the big boys are doing that. And that's what we deliver with Anvil and Dealer Connect. Yeah. And that that's the that's the one thing about understanding what's going on with the customer base that you're working with more than anything. It's just that, that focus on making sure that they get back a, a timely, you know, like you said, I want to call in, I'm calling you. I'm taking time out of my day to call you to tell you, I want to spend money with you. The least you could do is call me back and let me know that you want to take my money. You know what I mean? And it's that, and it, that's, that's a big part of this too. That's, that's the one thing I think is the most overlooked thing on the, on the planet. Like, I called them back, but it was three or four days later after they called me, you know, and they're ready to do something right now. And that's getting back to them in a timely manner is such a big, big part of, of that. Yeah, most process. dealerships, <clears throat> most dealerships set their escalation to one business hour. Yeah. That if you haven't gotten back to them in one business hour, and if as a salesperson, if the other, the second tier is four hours and you want to separate yourself. Um, you get back as a salesperson to somebody who sent an email in within four hours, your likelihood of closing that deal goes way up. Um, we had a dealership contact us uh, out your way and, you know, um, or out West, I should say, West of us. And, uh, you know, specifically they were talking about, I make a good living on all the people that don't get followed up. on." They've contacted four or five other people and they're interested in a mid-sized tractor. They're interested in how a hay baler. And it's who follows up right. and they put an emphasis on following up and, and it pays big dividends. And uh, you, you experience that buying a truck, right? Buying a, buying a car or anything like that. But follow up is king and it's expected. It is not um, optional anymore. And yeah. Anvil and Dealer Connect provide digital tools, automations that just makes that work. It's not like the idea is new. You know, it's not like Jason is out here saying, hey, I got this brand new idea called follow-up. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> That's yeah. been the standard for years. <clears throat> yeah. What we've tried to do is just take that to the equipment dealership industry and talking about, hey, we get a lot of emails from advertising sites and we've connected those dots. How do you respond back fast? Yeah. You know, some manufacturers have online credit applications now. They Not only have they waved $100 bills in your face, but they said, and I'm pre-approved. You know, um, and you still uh, let some of those go by with follow-ups and such. So we make that easier, yep. make that easier to manage salespeople level, management level, dealership level. So when you go back and have those conversations, you're doing it from a place of knowledge. You know what's going on. It's not a hope and a dream. Yep, absolutely. Well, man, hey, good stuff, Jason. Folks want to reach out to you and get more information about Anvil. What's the best way to do that? AnvilAppWorks.com or sales at anvilappworks.com will come right into us team as well. You can schedule a demo right on our website. There's a schedule demo button right in the top right-hand corner. 
lots of case studies as well. So I'm telling you some stories, but there's lots of case studies and customers telling you how they're getting benefit from our stuff and uh, rec and suggest going over there and looking at those as well and seeing how we could help you too. Right on, man. Jason, appreciate you, uh, what you're doing and appreciate the guys over there at Anvil. So thanks for being on the podcast. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you. All right, man. I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC, on LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast, and the ever so cleverly named Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. So check that out. You'll see the video version of this right here. So check that out. I'll be there. Uh, go to Moving Iron LLC for everything Moving Iron related. And I uh, got some new blog posts up there as well. So with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Jason Holt. Good smart folks. Out. Moving Iron in the 21st century.